Howdy, howdy. We're gonna make some bread today. And I'm gonna take you with me. How about that? So, I'm gonna show you start to finish how I make bread for our family to make sandwiches. So this is loaf bread. I'm gonna show you how I do it in my bread machine. And I'm gonna break it into three parts. So the first part is going to be how I make the dough. After that, we'll come back and I'll show you what I do with the dough and how I shape it and bake it. And then part three will be taking it out of the oven. Actually, that may be part two. <laughs> I'll show you guys how I cut it, how I store it, and how um, we go through so much bread. So, if you are watching this on YouTube, all of the links that I will mention are below in the description. If you're watching on IGTV, then you're gonna have to PM me for links because <laughs> that's just the nature of the beast. So first, I am using a Zoharushi Pack 20, P-A-C 20. I'm gonna take you guys over there super quick so you can see it. So I'm not gonna go over anything with how to use the bread machine. You can go to YouTube and type in Zoharushi bread machine and get lots of tutorials. But the reason that I picked this particular bread machine is because of the heating element in the lid. Not all bread machines have that. It does a little better if you want to bake your bread in there and it also helps it get a little bit more of a better rise. I always want to get a good rise out of you all, okay? So I don't actually bake my bread in the bread machine. So people are like, why do you have a bread machine if you don't bake your bread in there? So this is the bread machine canister. I don't know what else to call it. And whenever it bakes, it even bakes up to the top of this um, handle right here. And so it's really tall and that makes a really big sandwich. <laughs> And I can't stretch the bread as far. I know people are like, that sounds weird. But no, really, if I can separate mine into two one pound loaves instead of two, instead of one large two pound loaf, it stretches farther for us. I get more sandwiches. I'd love to tell you there's science behind that, but I'm not a scientific girl. So I make my dough in here, I pull it out. That's what we'll do in part two. And I shape it into loaves and I bake them in my oven. And that's just so I have more control over the dough. I have more control over the size. Can you bake in the Zoharushi Pack 20? Yes, have I? Yes, many times. If I need bread in a hurry, I don't have time to pull it out and make my own loaves, I'll bake it in there, no problem, and it does really well. But for the most part, I like to pull it out and have control over that dough. But I have the bread machine because it makes mixing dough stupid easy for me because we're really busy, just like everybody else in the world, and I can literally, which I'm gonna show you guys, put all my ingredients in here, stick it in there, press the dough setting, so I don't even do anything fancy, you guys, press the dough setting, and then walk away, and I come back, and it's perfect. And for me, uh, even my husband, who was skeptical because the Zoharushi is a rather expensive bread machine, says it has paid for itself over and over and over. So, I'm gonna real quickly show you guys how I put the ingredients in the bread pan, and I'm gonna talk through the ingredients with you um, as I do that, because the recipe I use is the Bread Becker's Basic Dough. You can Google that and find it, or it also comes in the Red Bread Becker's Recipe Collection Cookbook. Um, as you can see, mom has hearts, hearts, hearts. Love it. I think when you find a recipe that works, you go with it. You don't mess with perfection, and this recipe works really well for our family. So that's the one I'm gonna show you. And let's see if I can get this turned down. Yeah. So here we go. Here is this. My paddles are inside and ready to go. So the first ingredient that you're gonna put in is the water. All of your liquids go in the bottom of the pan. Then your, um, your flour and your yeast go on top and you don't mix it. And so you put them in order, no matter what bread machine you have this recipe and method will work. So, I've got one and a half cups of warm water. I'm just gonna pour that down in the bottom. It is from the tap. How do you know that your water's warm enough? If you give your baby a bath in it, you're good. If it would burn your baby, it will burn your bread. No likey. Okay, next in the bottom, I put salt, two teaspoons of salt. So this is pink Himalayan sea salt. You can use whatever salt you like. This is just our salt preference. You want to put the salt down in the, the liquid because salt and yeast don't like each other. So we keep them as far away from each other as we can. Okay, so I've got my salt down in there, two teaspoons. 
Next, I'm gonna do my oil. I'm currently using, today, avocado oil. I've used all different kinds of oils, coconut oil, olive oil, anything works. So just whatever oil that your family prefers. We're using one third cup. Always measure your oil before you measure your next ingredient, which is honey, because then your honey will slide right out. So there's my oil. I'm gonna use a third a cup of honey. So this is just honey from Sam's, clover honey. I'd love to tell you guys that this part is fast, but it's not. It's a lot faster when I take the lid off and make a giant mess, but since this is on video, I wanna make sure that I don't embarrass myself quite yet. I'm always aimed, I aim to embarrass myself the least amount of po as possible. Okay, so there's my third a cup of honey. I'm putting the liquids down in the bottom, remember? Doing the oil first. Bump, bump. We get all of it out. Put it in the sink. Wipe off your finger because your finger is sticky now. Now, next, this recipe calls for an egg, which I eliminate because I use another ingredient, which is the lecithin. So the lecithin helps um, emulsify, put things together, make it, I just tell people the lecithin is the part in the spread that makes it easy to cut, doesn't dry out, and performs more like a sandwich bread. So I do use the lecithin, I do add the gluten, I do not do the egg or the flax. So those are the two things that I leave out. Play around with this recipe and see what you like best. You may find that you like the egg instead of the lecithin. You may find that you really like how the flax makes it taste. But for us, I use the lecithin and gluten and I'll leave out the egg and the flax. So, next up we're gonna put our gluten in. I'll tell you why I'm using this. So this is the gluten Bob's Red Meal that I'm gonna use, just a teaspoon. I use fresh ground hard white wheat when I make my bread. However, okay, so there's my one teaspoon, I'm putting it down in here. It mixes better if you put the gluten and the lecithin down in the liquid. So I use fresh ground wheat. I buy wheat berries and then I grind them. If you um, search humorous homemaking flour, you should be able to um, see that as well. But I actually, <laughs> last night noticed that I was out of hard white wheat berries and had to order some. So today I'm using half of ground wheat and half of organic white flour because that's just what I have. But in this recipe, do you have to use fresh ground flour? No, you can use whatever flour you have. I've used tons of, I've used uh, wheat, I've used white, I've used bread flour, I've used hard white wheat. The only thing you don't want to do, you don't want to use a gluten-free flour and you don't want to use a soft white wheat, okay? So other than that, that's what you need to know. Now, for my lecithin, I like these granules, the now non-GMO lecithin granules. They look like this, okay? Just little yellow granules and you're gonna put two tablespoons down in there. And like I said, putting them down in the liquid um, helps them dissolve and mix in. If you try to put them in with the flour, sometimes you'll notice some lecithin lumps. That doesn't sound delicious, does it? Okay, so now we are going to put our flour in. You do not mix it. You're literally just scooping and putting your flour on top. The recipe says four and a half, four to four and a half cups. I usually stick to the four cups. I don't do the four and a half because I prefer a wetter dough over a drier dough. Okay, so see how I'm just kind of laying it on top of the water. Okay, so then you wanna smooth it out just a little bit because the next step is to kind of make a crater in the very center of your flour to pitch your yeast, okay? So then just scoop out a little bit so that you have a hole right here, not all the way down to the water, just enough to put your yeast in this hole right here. Now this is my yeast of choice. I buy in bulk from Sam's Club because that's the cheapest way to get it. I store it in the freezer in a beautiful Pioneer Woman mason jar, but uh, I learned the tip for storing your yeast for longevity from the Bread Beckers 
and so that's just what I've always done. So I know I've got a tablespoon down in here, so in your little hole, you're gonna put your yeast, okay? And then you're done. You do not mix anything else. So now what we're gonna do is go over and we're gonna put this in our bread machine. We're gonna hit the dough setting. It's gonna take, I don't know, an hour and a half or two hours to mix up the dough. It will make a beep, beep, beep sound a little bit in, and that's if you want to add anything like nuts or seeds or raisins or anything at that point. If you don't, just ignore that beeping, and then whenever it's done, it will beep again, and you'll have perfect dough, and that's when we'll come back for part two. So let's go over here and put this in. When you put it in, you kind of just set it down in, and you'll hear it catch. So open up your lid. Plug it up first, that's important. Okay, we're gonna set it down in. Did you hear it? Okay, close the lid. Turn it on and press your dough setting and start. And there it goes, ladies and gentlemen. I will be back for part two, for what to do whenever you have perfect dough ready to go.